So guys, today we have this amazing 2017 Maserati Levanta and it's not only just regular Levanta, that's SQ4. And the main question about this car, is it still reliable for the money it's priced? And uh, does it make sense to buy used 2017, 2018 uh, Maserati Levanta? Is it still same luxury SUV like it used to be six years ago? Or it just piece of crap like all Maserati in my opinion, because they're going on the price down so fast and the car just given a lot of, a lot of problems with engine transmission and a lot of other different things. Number one, what I was gonna say, back in 2017, when this car just came out on the market and I went for test drive, it was insane because Maserati never done SUV before and this car was just insanely nice looking car. Same way, the, I think it's the same platform or maybe about the same, the Alfa Romeo, uh, Stilvius. I mean, I'm not a big fan of those Italian cars, but anyway, so it was a huge, amount like a lot of different SUVs a lot of choices you can do maybe BMW X5M or Porsche Cayenne with different engines and the Maserati Levante because brand new this car was 94,000 uh, MSRP that's crazy and right now you can buy it for one third of that price but I want to say that I bought this car I think it's the cheapest one at the auction you can find and I paid less than 20,000 for it it's a clean title it had one small accident on the back uh, of the bumper and the quarter panel, but it was not a big deal. So clean title, clean history, but still it's going to be announced as a uh, damage to the rear end. But it's a nice looking SUV and after all the things I done on this car, it looks amazing, drives good. It's a little bit complicated, a lot of different things I'm going to show it to you, but in general i mean thirty thousand. if you want to buy the used maserati levante right now for that amount of money what you can buy you can get new mazda or chevy or honda or something else and there is a lot of porsches uh there's a lot of bmw x4 x5 you can buy same time but again it is a luxury SUV, it's not the same as a BMW, it's not daily, I mean, it's not like car, you're gonna see it everywhere. It's kind of rare, even here in Los Angeles, I didn't see that many cars uh, for the last, last, I don't know, like couple weeks maybe, so it's not like everywhere, but they are kind of attractive, I would say, and uh, it is Italian design. So what do you guys think about this design in my opinion it's kind of a little bit weird you know those forms uh going back to 90s maybe when the maserati been doing a lot of different experiments with the body style uh pininfarina they've been doing a lot of things for maserati too so i think it's one of them but uh, again just because it's a maserati and everybody knows it's so expensive it looks really good on the road uh so let's see what's going on in this car so under the hood we have v6 twin turbo engine and it's only 424 horsepower i would say this engine is supposed to give much more than 500 so it is kind of fast but same time if you're going to check it 0 to 60 it is the same six seconds as a new mazda 630 that's kind of set new so it's not that super fast luxury suv it is just nice looking car and it is a luxury because not so many cars been produced and they were kind of expensive from the new i think and right now the parts are expensive to do the maintenance it's not cheap at all and and on and on and on the brakes and the oil the filters itself so i mean again the people who can buy the used suv in that amount of money i think they would not go with maserati because they knows uh they know the maintenance for this car it's not cheap at all and you might gonna face a lot of problems so the choice is always yours but in my opinion i wouldn't buy that to keep it for myself or for my family but just to buy it for fun because it was the cheapest one on the market cheapest one at the auction for sure i'll go with that and for sure i'm gonna sell this car and make money on it there is no doubt about it but design itself it's such a cool the radiator grill it has a carbon carbon style plastic 
on it. Maybe just the covers. I think it's a cover. So it's just like a bundle or I don't know who found it and why they put it. But there is a lot of different carbon pieces all around the car. Some of them are already removed because they've been falling apart like from the door handles. But general, I mean, the front end of this car looks amazing. The bumper just massive. All those uh, aluminum pieces on the bottom. They look so cool. The wheels, I kind of don't like it. Those are optional 20 inch rims and they've been painted. So it's an aftermarket paint job already on those rims and they not looking good. But somebody decided to match it same color as the body and that's why they repainted. I don't think it's a good idea at all. So by getting inside the car, what first thing you're gonna see? The, the first thing you're gonna see the dashboard. It's fully leather. And the red stitches obviously it's italian car but number two you're gonna see the master switch same as the grand caravan mercedes's tesla early models and mercedes's early models too so it's all about the same so the next thing you're gonna see that's the multimedia right in multimedia there is a maserati emblem right here in the middle but it's basically same as a dutch or chrysler or i don't know it just kind of said Maserati they used this kind of multimedia for almost hundred thousand dollar car I uh, would do something else but besides that we have a lot of different carbon panels carbon fiber I don't think it's a real one I think it's a fake or maybe no it's not aftermarket that's kind of original but it is a uh, doesn't look expensive anyway so we have a air suspension it's going up and down when you're going faster the car going down itself you same time you can adjust it so you can go high all the way or all the way down but again after 40 miles an hour the car gonna go in a mid position so besides that the climate control it's actually kind of okay to use it but I don't like the design of it uh, what else the pockets the mid uh, the mid pocket there's a lot of things you can put inside right and there is a cup holders I mean who need the cup holders to put it all the way there what uh, why why they doing that kind of thing I have no idea maybe it's uh, to cool down your coca-cola so on the back the space not i would say not the same space as a porsche cayenne or bmw bmw has much more room on the back is it comfortable driving i mean kind of because you drive in the cv you sit in kind of high so in the mid uh in the middle of the dashboard we have a kind of chrono pack uh, as a porsche so the maserati they've been doing that kind of thing for the old Maserati looks in my opinion looks cheap uh, we have a there is a lot of different options this car available number one we have all-wheel drive and number two we have a panoramic roof and power lift gate all the buttons and you can see it's a six years old car the glasses for the dome light they're already kind of dark and i would say it needs to be replaced and what else is the car feels like it's old i think yes it is it smells like old and the leather on the seats i would say it's from like beginning of 2000 but it's only six years old car italian quality Ta -ta 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 -ta. for some reason italian cars i mean they're all good about the design they're all good about materials the materials kind of it looks old but same time the leather the quality the quality is good but the design and the way they made it it looks old in my opinion so they are going about the design they are going about the quality of materials like the dashboard full of leather it's not squeezing like the mercedes or bentley or rolls royce even they are all the leather on the dashboard on the roll sources they just uh, drying so basically here is fine on this car but they don't care about the practicality they didn't care about uh, reliable for the engine so the engine it's well known as a problematic engine and they do have a lot of problems as a chains the misfire and on and on and on even the, the uh, Daimler Chrysler they've been taking over this 
Maserati concern, I mean the Maserati factory and doing their own things, still they didn't improve the engine I think and uh, this car amazingly made 87,000 so it's like one of the 100 cars but again they might replace the engine already and it may be not the original one because 87,000 on a Maserati engine it's kind of a lot so again I would not get the car with that kind of mileage even if this car would be so cheap uh, as a retail buyer me as a wholesale buyer I'm I love those kind of cars if you can buy if I can buy something cheap but it's a luxury unit for sure I'll go for it all the way because I want to test it I want to check it drive it and see if this car is still good to go or not if you ever drove the Fiat 500 Abad so you probably know what kind of exhaust that car has so this car has about a similar exhaust system so when you start the car especially in the morning it's producing a lot of noise like you have 100 no <clears throat> so when you start this car in the morning it's producing a lot of noise like you have 900 or 1000 horsepower under the hood but it's only 400 horsepower so basically they spend time and they spend money design and uh, engineering the way they're gonna do the exhaust so this car is gonna be so loud everybody gonna think it's a super sport hypercar but it's not it's just dodge you know so one of the most annoying thing in my opinion on the Maserati that's the transmission shifter it kind of feels it goes easily on a parking reverse and drive but when the car sits on a parking and you want to go kind of fast so you 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 cannot go on a drive so it's always going like on a reverse or neutral and when you need to go to reverse sometimes you get lost what i'm doing and after i need to go to the parking so you basically when you when you're on a drive you have to go step by step through all the years and when you go on on a drive you cannot just sit and go on a drive oh you can sometimes but so the shifter itself it's kind of annoying and the ghibli has about no and the ghibli has exactly the same shifter i don't know why they design it why and uh there is no practicality on that so we have an ice mode we have a sport mode and off-road i don't know what kind of off-roading you can do on this car so those are not plastic those are piece of metal uh plus and minus paddle shifting right behind the steering wheel and those kind of feeling cool like if you ever drove again uh, uh ferrari or lamborghini they do have kind of same Thing. so those paddle shifters they are giving you kind of idea about super sport luxury car SUV Maserati Levanta SQ4 so the backup camera besides just regular camera we have a 360 view also we have a parking assist so what else we can find here and besides 360 view there is a just regular Dodge Chrysler menu and a lot of different things you can do same as that but what about the Maserati emblem itself heated wheel no wonder uh app manager user guide surround camera that's about the same is it something cool app manager looks like this car doesn't have a navigation take me to starbucks starbucks oh nice we have a view map no nice we got it we got it we have a navigation uh maybe it's somewhere in the menu no it's not but it's not on the screen ah map now we have map we didn't see it before okay got it so this car has navigation all good i think whoever tried to design and engineer this car they've been thinking about oh what we got as a competition so we have other suvs we have a bmw we have a porsche and they're like hmm we are the maserati so we're gonna do nice pizza and maserati and at the end of the day they got some stuff from the maserati some stuff from pininfarina some stuff from chrysler and dodge they put it all together they did this kind of ugly design of suv and they like voila well, yeah, hundred thousand luxury suv super sport maserati levante but uh in the reality in the reality i think again uh 
in reality it's kind of weird dutch grand caravan stuff uh with that ugly multimedia display and whatever's going on there and and that's it so all the things together they got it everywhere but why you doing luxury super sport kind of suv car and selling it for hundred thousand if you are using cheap stuff like the switch the master switch i again i understand the tesla use it because of mercedes so mercedes use it the dutch grand caravan they use it from the mercedes to do exactly the same stuff so they don't want to uh, that time redesign it or do any other master switches they just been using the same but maserati levante so people were uh ready to pay that kind of money for this car because it's luxury suv there is something new it's never been before you know it's a huge competition for the porsche and uh, bmw but all those small things if you ever drove the car before the one i'm telling you about you're not gonna accept this unit as a super luxury suv i just cannot i just cannot because the switch it is from grand caravan you might gonna say yeah you drove so many dutch caravans yes i am but same time no i'm not because any dutch any chrysler you're gonna jump inside you're gonna see the light switch exactly the same the door the master switch exactly the same the menu the multimedia screen exactly the same and there is some things here and there and there basically you're not feeling yourself like you are driving super luxury suv so in reality right now in 2023 this six years old uh maserati levante suv it just become one of the uh one of the suv everybody can buy it because if the new car 28,000 honda civic almost everybody can get it you can get for the same money this car but what are you gonna do with that that's the other story so guys what i'm saying in the real time in the real world this car needs a lot of money not only your attention not only the money for the gas this especially this car with 87,000 miles needs a lot of money for the maintenance number one the oil is dirty all the filters are gone cabin engine filter uh oil filter same the brakes they are gone all four i need four others i need all the brake pots the wheels the rims itself i have to repaint it i have to take them out and take it to the rim repair shop so they basically gonna do the uh uh inside the own high temperature paint job on the rims tires they all gone i need to buy all four new tires and on and on and on and this car i didn't even lift it so if i'm gonna lift it up and there is a lot of oil leaks going on it's gonna be a lot of extra and extra and extra money so basically i think this car gonna go to auction again and it's gonna be sold uh i don't know for how much i'm gonna sell it for but i just don't want to spend my money and time for this beautiful luxury six years old suv it just the way it is that's why the people who've been driving this car it looks like they've been paying more attention for the insurance and uh, car payment but they've been paying less attention for the maintenance that's why when you buy the luxury used car you have to pay a little bit money just to do the inspection because again if i'm going to put this car for sale and i'm going to put cheaper than anyone else if somebody sells it for 30,000, I can put it for 25,000, right? And I'm going to sell it because it's going to be the cheapest one in the market. People are going to come buy it, but they're going to face a lot of problems and they are not ready for that. That's for sure.